Hello, I'm Becky White, and I'm in the Organization Development and Evaluation Unit, serving as a Resource Specialist for Grant Development. My role is to assist those interested in developing and seeking grants. This series of web-based trainings is designed to help a beginner in grant seeking to get started. This is Module 4, Basic Elements of a Proposal. To get ready for this training, you will need to pause the training and return to the ODE unit intranet site and look in the online training folder. You will need to print out the materials for Module 4. These include organizational background and mission examples, project goals worksheet, and the project objectives worksheet. This grant writing training series is designed to provide you with basic information about writing for grants to enhance your extension programs. To date, there are six modules. The modules include 1. Getting started, 2. Creating a program logic model, 3. Identifying potential funders, 4. Basic elements of a grant, 5. Developing a grant budget, and 6. The LSU Ag Center Grant Protocol. The Grant Seeking Training Series goal is for participants to attain the knowledge, skill, and confidence to develop a grant proposal. The training series objectives include participants will gain knowledge of strategies to start developing a grant proposal, the basic components of a grant proposal, ways to find potential grant funders, and the LSU Ag Center Grant Protocol. The long-term impact expected as a result of sharing this information is that extension agents write grants, receive grant funding, and implement projects that foster their clientele's growth, development, and quality of life. As mentioned previously, you can do this. Like most of our work, it is about breaking down the work challenge into accomplishable pieces that you can handle. Learning about basic elements of a typical grant proposal can help you develop the pieces of a standard proposal for an extension program. Let's get started. The basic elements of a grant proposal include an introduction to the project concept and grant request, an explanation of extension's mission and background, a statement of need that serves to justify the necessity for your project, a detailed project description, a request for financial support and detailed budget, and a proposal conclusion. Let's focus on each of the basic elements separately. Typically, grant proposals require some sort of brief introduction or an abstract or executive summary. For extension proposals, an introduction might briefly describe the LSU Ag Center and the Louisiana Cooperative Extension Service. If it's a 4-H effort, you will need to describe the 4-H program generally and also include details about your local program. Briefly describe the purpose of the proposal and be sure to include the requested amount for the project. Remember to be short and succinct. An example of an introduction to a grant from the LSU Ag Center Extension Service might be, the Louisiana Cooperative Extension Service is the public service arm of the LSU Agricultural Center and has been serving people for a century. Our mission is to help the people of Louisiana improve their lives through an educational process that uses research-based knowledge focused on issues and needs. Our goal is to promote positive behavioral changes in people through informal educational programs. The Little Bookshelf program is designed to help parents read routinely to their child from birth. Parents of newborns receive 12 children's books, a small bookshelf, and positive parenting information. The purpose of this proposal is to request $20,000 to provide program resources for 400 low-income parents of newborns in the greater Baton Rouge area. This introduction is six sentences long. The first three briefly describe the extension service in Louisiana. The last three provide a brief summary of the program and the requested amount of the grant. The next basic element of a grant proposal is a section about your organization's mission and background. In this case, it would be the Cooperative Extension Service. Describe our mission to improve the lives of Louisianans through an informal educational process that uses research-based knowledge focused on their issues and needs. Then write about Extension's goals that most pertain to this project that you are proposing. Briefly share how the Extension Service got where it is now. Here's a very generic mission and background example appropriate for Extension. The Louisiana Cooperative Extension Service serves the people of Louisiana by helping them improve their lives through community-based informal education programs. All Extension programs are based on research and focused on relevant issues and needs. We provide educational programs to families, 
4-H youth, homeowners, farmers, and agriculture-related businesses. Here's another example from the five found on your handout for this module, Mission and Background Section Examples. The LSU Agricultural Center is one of ten institutions within the Louisiana State University system. Its primary functions are to serve the people of Louisiana through education and research through the operation of the Louisiana Cooperative Extension Service and the Louisiana Agricultural Experiment Station. The Louisiana Cooperative Extension Service is the public service arm of the LSU Agricultural Center and extends the knowledge derived from research to the people of the state. Its mission is to help the people of Louisiana improve their lives through an educational process that uses research-based information focused on issues and needs. Positive behavioral change in people is promoted through informational education programs offered in communities throughout Louisiana. Feel free to use these examples in your proposal. Another element of a basic grant proposal is a need statement or a justification of the need. This helps you really sell the idea that this is a critical need and where you justify the expenditure of the funder's money for this effort. Write an explanation about the need for the project. This may require that you do a bit of research. You could use your pair situation information, check with the Kids Count website or the U.S. Census Quick Facts for statistics that might be relevant. Check with the Extension Specialist for appropriate research statistics. Weave the statistics in your narrative about the need. You can also use testimonies. Get a quote or a testimony about the need from a person who knows. A representative, a senator, a juvenile judge, a sheriff, a district attorney, a principal, perhaps a school superintendent or school board member, or a 4-H club leader. The next four slides are examples of reliable, trustworthy data sites that might help you with your needs statement section. The U.S. Census State and County Quick Facts site allows you to seek data at the state, county, or city level. You can find demographic, social, economic, employment, and educational types of information and more. If your project pertains to children, explore the Louisiana Kids Dashboard. This site is a compilation of information shared by several state departments that serve children in Louisiana. The Annie E. Casey Foundation is the supporter for the notable Kids Counts Data Center and has information on child well-being by state and county. If your project is focused on health issues, you might check out this site. County health rankings and roadmaps provide information on how your county fares in contrast with others on many health issues. One of the most important basic elements of a grant proposal is the project description. In this section, you would explain your ideas to address the need you've identified in the previous section. You describe any uniqueness about your project idea. Examples might include gardening skills for kindergartners or special needs students, books for babies and their parents, youth restoring the coast by planting marsh grass, youth developing a photo exhibit for a parish museum, a leadership short course for teens, etc. You could highlight in this section why the funder you selected is a good fit for the project. Include how your project values and their program focus is similar or the same. Include a project timeline. Include what you hope to accomplish. Include specific project goals and objectives, as well as what you expect the final outcomes and impacts to be. Describe how you will evaluate the project. Funders want to know if their support of your project actually made a difference. For most extension educational programs, we evaluate to determine if our goals and objectives or expected outcomes have been achieved. We assess what the participants gain or how they change or what is different during and after the project activities are implemented. In your program description, you would include developing goals and objectives. Goals that are broad, have general intentions, are somewhat intangible, somewhat abstract, and generally just difficult to measure. Objectives, conversely, are very narrow and precise. They would be tangible, concrete, and most important, measurable. So goals are overarching principles that guide our decision making. Objectives are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely steps that can be taken to meet the goal. 
Effective program goal statements have three components. They include a phrase about doing something, using an active verb. They describe among whom or with what and indicate where. The template for a program goal is to do something using an active verb plus among whom plus where. An example would be to increase service learning participation of 4-H youth in XYZ Parish. Another example is to establish a Master Gardener program for the residents in XYZ Parish. And yet another example would be to organize neighborhood walking groups for residents in XYZ Parish. Take a moment to review the Project Goals worksheet that you printed out at the beginning of this webinar. It can help you develop your own program goals. Next, let's talk about writing SMART objectives. To write a SMART objective, you should think specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. So ask yourself, is my objective specific? What exactly will I accomplish? Is it measurable? How will I know when I've reached this objective? Is it achievable? Is achieving this objective realistic with the effort and the commitment? Is it relevant? Why is this objective significant to the program? And then is it timely? When will you achieve this objective? Another tip in writing SMART objectives is to always use active verbs. There are many active verbs to choose from, but not all mesh well with our extension outreach methods. Here you see a few active verbs that I think are appropriate for our unique extension outreach methods. And also consider our logic model framework for program planning. Generally, in our extension program planning and evaluation designs, we evaluate the effectiveness of our programs by measuring changes in participant learning and participant actions. So let's review some of these. For short-term outcomes, you might use active verbs like change, complete, demonstrate, increase, identify, list, name, recognize, and specify. For those medium-term outcomes that you write, you could use adopt, apply, complete, demonstrate, establish, initiate, produce, show, and use. A template you can use to develop a program objective is when the change will occur, plus who or what will be impacted, plus how much change occurs, plus what will change. So let's look at an example. The goal you've established for your program would be to establish a Master Gardener program for residents in XYZ Parish. Your program objective would be, in 2014-15, a 40 or more local gardeners participating in XYZ Parish Master Gardener training program, 85% will increase their level of knowledge in home horticulture at least 10%. Take a moment to review the worksheet for developing program objectives that you printed out at the beginning of this training. You can use it to help you as you develop your extension programs and grant proposals. Another critical element of any grant proposal is the request for funding and budget. You should write a sentence stating your request for the funding amount. You should be specific and explain how funds are to be used. Describe in detail your projected project budget. In many instances, you should include the total cost of the project, including what it would cost in terms of your time and effort and the value of any volunteer time and efforts. Explain where their funds fit into the total budget. If you're not asking for salary support, be sure to distinguish that to the funder. Be specific and detailed. Typical budget categories include salary and wages, fringe benefits, travel, supplies, operating services, professional services, other charges, and equipment. There are forms to help you develop a budget at the LSU Ag Center Sponsored Programs Unit site under Sample Forms and Documents. In addition to a simple budget, you may need a budget justification. This provides a more detailed explanation regarding items from each budget category. Remember, your request should be reasonable and in keeping with the funder's past record for average funding. And the final basic element of a grant proposal is a conclusion. Provide a concise summary for your project and request for funding. Highlight the benefits of the proposed partnership. Include a thank you for the opportunity to apply for this funding and mention that you will follow up soon. When you have completed these six components of your proposal, you should consider it as a first draft. 
The next step is to refine it. Follow these steps in refining your proposal. Review your grant proposal requirements again and check to see that you've adhered to them. Please note the font, line spacings, margins, page length, word length, etc. If there is a scoring rubric for the grant program, be sure to review that and check your proposal to see if it fully addresses each scoring rubric item. Reread your draft proposal several times, taking breaks between readings and looking for awkward sentences, errors, or anything that is unclear. Use that wonderful spelling and grammar check that Microsoft Word makes available. And have another person read it and note anything that is unclear to them, any errors or gaps that they notice. In summary, the six basic elements of a typical grant are the introduction, the mission and background, a statement of need, a project description, a request for funding and budget, and a conclusion. I encourage you to begin your own grant proposal. Go on and get your feet wet. Take a section at a time. Step by step, you will have a great foundation for a project grant proposal. Thank you for viewing this presentation. I hope you will set a personal goal to get started in grant writing. Your extension program can be enhanced through grants. The next module in this series will cover developing a grant proposal budget.